Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about inference for experiments. Inference for experiments has to do with what we can infer from a given experiment. This is going to be a huge topic that's going to lay a groundwork for the rest of the course. And understanding this today uh, is important, but please understand we're going to we're going to continue to move on. And throughout this course, inference is going to become more and more pivotal, a more and more pivotal topic. And so the concept introduced here today is going to help lay that groundwork for us. Let's talk a little bit about samples, sampling variability, and, and what is significant. When we talk about sampling variability, what we're talking about is different samples yielding different estimates. For example, let's say we have a group of freshmen. And from that group of freshmen, we want to know um, how tall... How tall is the average freshman? And so what we do is instead of asking all the freshmen, we pull out a simple random sample of uh, six freshmen. And we find that their average height is, let's say, 5'8". Uh, so that would be uh, five foot eight inches. So we think to ourselves, wow, you know, I really saw some tall freshmen there the other day. Maybe that's not right. So I pull out another sample of freshmen and I do a simple random sample. And this time I do another six and I get that the average of that group is five foot ten. And then all of a sudden I wonder to myself, hmm, well, I wonder which one's right. And so obviously I want a tiebreaker. And so I pull out another simple random sample of six freshmen. And this time I get five foot seven and a half inches. And I think to myself, well, now I really don't know which one is right. Is it the middle one? Is it closer to 5'8 because I got that sample of 5'7 and whatnot? So the idea of sampling variability is that different samples, samples yield different results. Okay, different samples yield different results. But along with that, one of the, the, the tangential things that happens is that larger samples yield more accurate estimates. Okay, and so if my freshman class is equal to 100 people and I'm pulling out samples of size six, that's not necessarily going to give me as good of a picture as if I pulled out samples of size, let's say 20, because the more people that you involve, the better, the closer to the average or the true, the true average that you're going to get. And so this helps us introduce a concept known as margin of error. And a margin of error has to do with an interval it creates an interval of plausible values and it looks like this the sample estimate plus or minus our margin of error. We see this a lot of times in polls. So somebody will say 51% of people approve of the new um, food packaging, plus or minus 3%. So that could be all the way down to 48% or all the way up to 54%. So this margin of error concept puts an interval around it and allows us to have some wiggle room to where our true mean might fall in there. And so what we're really looking at when we start to talk about um, you know, taking out a sample and finding out what the mean of that sample is or what the what, whatever we're measuring from that particular sample is. Um, I pull out these samples, for example, the one that's 5'8 and 5'10 and, and 5'7 and a half, and I pull out one that is, let's say I have a simple random sample equal to six, and I get that it's an average of five foot three or five foot five. Okay, so that seems to be quite a bit below the other ones, which seem to be a little bit closer to each other. And so, is it significant? Was there something wrong with the sampling? Was that a true, uh, is that a true measurement? And so, the concept of statistically significant
has to do with <clears throat> when results from a study are too unusual to have occurred by chance. Here's what I'm talking about. Let's just say that somebody came up to you and told you, hey, uh, the average for freshmen is five foot nine. Okay, the average height for freshmen is five foot nine inches. And you're like, hmm, that's weird. That seems a little tall. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of skeptical of that. And so what you do is you're like, I'm going to run my own experiment. So here's the pool of freshmen. And you pull out a simple random sample of 10 people. And those 10 people, you find, they actually have an average of five foot six inches. And you think to yourself, hmm, that's weird. Well, that's like three inches below the average. And so um, you're just wondering out of a class of, let's say 50 freshmen, you pulled 10 of them and it's five foot six. How unusual is this? So one of two things can happen. Either your sample is particularly unusual or the average that is stated is incorrect. And so statistical significance allows us to take a meaningful sample from a group, evaluate the particular metric that we're looking at, and then value that against what has been done in a bunch of different samples and see how unusual is it. A visual for this, and if you're confused by that, please don't be because we're going to cover this extensively throughout the rest of this course. But essentially what happens is this. We take out a bunch of samples. So let's say we take out a bunch of samples here and we've got tons and tons of them in here. And we have some that kind of fall over this way. Statistical significance is saying if I draw a line here and I evaluate everything on this side of the line and the, my proportion of dots meaning how many dots, how many samples, and this represents uh, one sample. My proportion of dots, if it's uh, less than or equal to 5%, then that means it's statistically significant. Meaning, I had this example up here. Somebody said it was five foot nine. I got this sample, so somebody said it was five foot nine, so my average is somewhere in here, right? And I got this one sample right here from what I actually sampled. What I'm trying to evaluate is, did that happen by chance? Or is maybe the true mean not what they said it was? Is maybe the average not actually 5'9", like they said it was, because it was so unlikely that I grabbed a sample that just happened to be 5'6". So, what, so what's the deal with that? That's what statistically significant means. So uh, if the proportion is greater than 5%, then that would be not statistically significant. Meaning, if this wasn't the five, if this one right here, if this one right here wasn't the five, six, if five, six was tucked in here and I had a line and greater than 30% of the dots were in the five, six range, then I would say, oh, well, that's not a big deal because a lot of samples got five, six as their average, okay? Let's look at this. So that's that's kind of the laying the groundwork for the rest of the course. And so if you don't understand that all the way, that's okay. We can talk about that more in class, but that's kind of the gist of all this. So what are we gonna do with that right now? What we're gonna look at is the concept of sampling and how do we come by samples? And really that's what this whole chapter is about is how to pull meaning from samples from a population or from a group. So consider this, check your understanding. How, many, how much do national football players weigh on average. <clears throat> in a random sample of 50 NFL players, the average weight is about 244.4 pounds. So what I'd like for you to do is pause right here, do A, B, C, and D, and then come back, watch the answers and see if you have any questions. Um, I'm going to roll through, but a good practice for these check your understandings would be to um, do it in that way. <clears throat> so I'm going to keep going. So do I think that 244 pounds is the true average, meaning the actual average of all NFL players? Um, I actually do not because um, all samples are different. Okay, so all samples are different. 
Um, and since since we don't have the whole population, we don't expect the sample mean. to be the same as the true mean. True mean meaning the mean of the population, not a mean of the sample. So let's just say, so in, in letter B, if a ran, another random sample of 50 NFL players was taken, would you expect an average to weight of exactly 244 pounds? So we got 244.4, so we took a different random sample of 50? No, because every sample is different. Every sample is going to have a different mean. So in any group of 50 NFL players, we don't expect any of them to be the same. So here we go. Estimates are usually given within a margin of error. The margin of error for the estimate of 244 pounds is 14.2 pounds. Based on this, would you be surprised if the true average weight of NFL players was 260 pounds? When we go back up here, the way that margin of error works is we have some sample estimate and we put around it a margin of, an, a margin of error, which means our... Um, our interval will be this, 244.4 plus or minus 14.2 pounds, which would give us an interval of uh, 230.2 pounds to, I'll use a comma, I'll use interval notation, uh, to 258.6 pounds, okay? So that's our interval using our margin of error. So if I told you the true average is 260 pounds, so I would be surprised. So yes, according to our margin of error, The true mean should be between 230.2 and 258.6 pounds, okay? And 260 is outside 258.6 pounds. Okay, so 260 is outside the 258.6 pounds, so that seems to be a problem there based on our margin of error. Letter D, which would be more likely to give an estimate close to the true average weight of all NFL players, a random sample of 50 or a random sample of 100 players? Explain your answer. Well, think about it like this, that freshman example that we had up, up here. So if I took my big class of freshmen, right, and I pulled out... Uh, and let's say there's equal to 50 people, and I took five of them, or I took a group of 35 of them, which one do you think would be closer? Well, obviously it takes, so this, this one, each individual value in a group of five is more weighty, meaning if you have somebody who's particularly tall or particularly short, that's gonna skew the average in that way, whereas 35, you might have somebody who's particularly tall and particularly short, but you've got a bunch of values in here around the true mean that are gonna pull it back uh, to center. Whereas, you know, if you have somebody who's particularly tall and everybody over here, it's going to pull our average up toward that particularly tall person. So in general, kind of like we said in here, larger samples yield more accurate estimates. That's what's going on in this case as well. So a random sample of 100 players will produce a more accurate result or estimate. Okay, a random sample of 100 players will produce 
a more accurate estimate as well a sample of 150 more accurate than 100 153 more accurate than 150 okay so that is the basics of using in 